rock it out. We are live. Hey, good morning, everybody. Every Tuesday morning, 9 o'clock Pacific, Mortgage Coach here is here to put on the best sales meeting in the mortgage industry. And in order to do that, we need to have amazing leaders. We need to have amazing speakers. We need to have top producers. And today, we have Todd Duncan, one of the most prolific speakers in the mortgage industry. Todd, welcome to the call. Good to be with you, Dave. Thanks again for the chance to plug into your group and uh, excited about our time together. I, I am too. Well, the countdown is on. Sales mastery is near. Uh, you know, we're going to try to accomplish a few things in today's call. One, unpack what Todd believes are the five things that mortgage professionals, by the way, referral-based local mortgage professionals need to do to kill it as we close out the year and to thrive in 2019 and beyond. So that will be the theme. However, we are also just on the brink of sales mastery. So we, we want to start preparing. If you're tuned into this and you're going to sales mastery, we're going to tune you up so you get more value at that event. Um, if you're on the fence, whether you should go or not, we're going we're gonna to push you off the fence. And we're going to get you there. And if you don't even know what mass sales mastery is, hopefully we'll share a little bit about that. So, so Todd, before we just start unpacking the five things, you know, what's, what's up? I mean, it's, uh, it's September. What are, you, what are you hearing out there in the market? And what are some, some things that you think are important to set up today's call? Yeah, uh, Dave, I think that uh, everybody understands the, the truth of, of how competitive the space is right now. We see just a lot of movement in terms of um, issues that, that, you know, everybody probably would prefer avoiding, but by attacking them, they make you better, they make you stronger, they make you greater. And, um, you know, I think it's a time where we're watching the top mortgage professionals really look at sharpening their skills and really moving from that kind of generalist mentality to that specialist mentality. At the very least, you know, being a, a specialist in advising uh, mortgagees, people that need to finance and, and buy real estate on the ways to do it, the strategies around it. We're seeing that really, really um, step up in a large way right now. I think it's also time to, to really assess uh, how much value you're bringing to the marketplace. And I think that, you know, any mortgage company that isn't bringing a ton of value is going to find themselves, I think, struggling. There's a lot of independent mortgage banks right now that are um, uh, not as cash rich as they'd like to be and, and weathering the storm that we're in right now, just the kind of the challenge of, of the season has been difficult. And, um, you know, and I think, uh, I think that the, the big, getting big enough where your idea of the local community, you know, mortgage professional is uh, there, the day has arrived and uh, you've got to be really, really spot on and, uh, and really game on for the changes that, you can bring to the, you know, to the borrower introspective conversation to the, you know, the idea of strategy planning. And most certainly, I think our, our agents and our builders, you know, are, are feeling the, the shifting tide in terms of consumerism and how, uh, how people are, are going data first now rather than relationship first. And I think there's some real change there that if we're not, if we're not reversing and rethinking the way that we position ourselves in the mortgage transaction and the real estate transaction, we're going to, we're going to face some tough times. So there's just a, a lot of fear in, in what we know, Dave, you and I, after doing this for as long as we've done it is, is uh, the guys and gals that win attack, attack head on. They, they attack, even though there may be uncertainty. And at the end of the day, they don't wait, thing, wait for things to happen. They make them happen. So that's kind of what we're, we're seeing right now. It's a, it's just another season. This is the eighth season I've seen in, in, you know, 20, 26 years of running this company, that is a challenging season. So kind of the, kind of the lay down on it. Yeah. Well, I, I totally align with that. I'm going to show my screen real quick. And I think it's a good setup for this conversation, Todd, you know, on my screen right now, you guys see what, you know, I'm calling today's mortgage model. And, and when you look at it out of the, you know, the four pillars, lead development, mm -hmm. advice, transaction, client for life, the big one is transaction. And, and I think one of the realities in our marketplace is that transaction is going to get faster and easier. Technology, big data, mobile, consumer behavior, you know, it's making the transaction faster and easier. And so I think it's more important now than ever that loan officers, you know, really build up that advice piece. As the transaction gets tighter and smaller, your advice 
needs to be real. You know, that's why I think it's such a season for high trust selling sales mastery, Todd Duncan, uh, you need to actually execute really well on this. Mm-hmm. And it's such a season for clients for life. And again, you said something and it was, to me, it was almost like you were talking to us, like people know what they need to be doing, but they're not doing it. And even some of the most successful loan officers in America aren't doing all the right things for their client for life, you know, piece, AK annual reviews, you know, it's just one example. So, so that's why I, I get super pumped every time I interview Todd, him and I, I think we've been change agents for advice matters, high trust. We've been change agents for, you know, annual reviews and really deliver tangible value for your clients for life. And, um, and so Todd, I, I don't know, you, you saw that, you know, obviously I heck half of what I've learned, I learned from you and sales mastery over the years. Um, but I mean, how do you feel about that from a big picture perspective? And then let's get into the five things. I think, I think from a big picture perspective, there's nothing that anybody in this business can do to slow down the speed of execution. I mean, I, I completed a loan application three weeks ago in nine and a half minutes on my iPhone. And I'm talking about a complete application. I mean, all, all the documentation, all the bank accounts, all the, you know, the assets, everything downloaded and, and, you know, complete application, not to get an approval, um, but to, to gather uh, documentation and to present a case that, that the LO and the company would have a real representation of the qualifications and the ability to finance real estate. So, you know, you can do a deal in eight days today, right? I mean, LE takes a day, CD takes two days, and then the balance. And I mean, that's how fast things are going to get. Does everybody need it that fast? No. Will everybody want it that fast? No. Will, will people want the advice piece? Um, in a lot of cases, the millennials are absolutely going to need the advice piece. There's 75 million of them, and they're the largest purchase ecosystem that we should be focusing on as an industry. And, um, and, and then the baby boomers, do they appreciate the advice and do they want the advice relationally? The answer is yes. And there's 74 million of them. So there's 149 million people that want advice and any loan officer that's on this call right now can make a, a living and a fortune by being the best provider of solutions to those two ecosystems as possible. Speed is not going to eliminate the LO. Speed is going to improve the efficiency of the transaction, and it's going to reduce labor drag. It's going to increase customer SAT scores, and it's going to be able to put people in a position where they have the right intel to make the right recommendation. So I don't see any downside to what's going on, um, but you got to embrace it. You got to embrace speed. You got to embrace technology. You got to embrace what's going on because there's nothing you can do to stop it. So you either you either play the game and you play it the right way, or you don't, and you will lose. I mean, there's, a, yeah. there's, there's an odds on chance if we don't do this right. If the LO does not move quickly enough and, and is nimble enough to understand the speed impact that's happening in this industry right now, I'm fearful that they will be outmoded and they'll become at the very least irrelevant. Yeah, no doubt. I, and I do, as you know, Todd, often on these two Tuesday calls, I'm interviewing top producers and, and I'm hearing it over and over and I've never heard more you know, just call it monster producers, people that are doing 100 million or more a year in business that are like, it's harder than ever to differentiate on speed because everybody's doing that. I mean, I interviewed Jeremy Forcier last week, you know, Cody Touche a couple weeks before. And they're also really concerned that, you know what, I got to do more business just to make the same amount of money that I'm making. You know, and, and I think that's news. Like I've never seen the mega producers of the business saying that, you know what, I need to do more just to make the same. And so I'm going to um, get ready to kick off the five things, guys. But hopefully everybody is, is serious about executing on what you need to execute. There are, there are key strategies. There's the one beautiful thing in the business now. It's not like there's this mystery of how to be successful. You know, like there's a lot of great roadmaps. You know, sales mastery is going to unpack, you know, just a beautiful roadmap of success. It's just now you just gotta, you gotta do it. So, so Todd, one last thing. Um, well, I think everybody who's been in this business for any amount of time knows who you are. I am seeing a tremendous amount of new loan officers getting into the business. Um, in the mortgage coach community, I think just our YouTube channel attracts a lot of brand new loan officers. So literally 
there are loan officers watching this now that have, you know, it's their third month in the business. So if you could just give us one minute on who you are for all those new folks that are in their first three to six months of the business, and then let's unpack five things that everybody needs to be doing. Yeah, cool. So uh, my name is Todd Duncan, and I was a very successful LO for 11 years. I closed just under 6,000 transactions with my team, and I entered the business in a very difficult time. Rates were 20 20%, Govies were 18 and a half, five or six points. Consumer confidence was super low. We were in a recession, unemployment was high. And uh, I chose to get into the straight commission business. And I learned one thing as a brand new LO that I'll say to anybody out there that's brand new. It's never the market that determines your success. It's how you execute in the market. So I made a real decision early on that I would be about value and not about transactions. I'd be about enlivening and enriching and amplifying the human relationship and doing mortgages and uh and i did enough of them where i could answer a second call for my career which was what do i do now that i've done a lot of mortgages and i decided to start a company that specialized in helping mortgage originators choose a relationship high trust path to do business in and for 26 years i've hosted a event called sales mastery over 65,000 loan originators have attended this event and um, we're going to have our next one in three and a half weeks in San Diego, California. But my mission in life is to equip LOs to do, to do more business, to make more money, to do it in less time with less stress and produce a better consumer experience. So that's who I am. Bam, man, if I was a new loan officer and I heard that, I'd be like, <laughs> this odd thing is legit. So, so, yeah, so, all right, so. So by the way, if, if you're watching this right now and you are at Sales Mastery, come up and say, hey, I'm gonna be there. By the way, I've been at every single Sales Mastery, so it's like, it's coming, it's like coming home to my college reunion, or high school college reunion, um, really fired up. And, and by the way, even if you're not, if you're new, come up and tell me you're new, because I wanna know all the new people there. So Tom, let's, let's unpack these five things that everybody yeah. needs to get out on. Uh, by the way, folks, we're not gonna go through them on a slide. While Todd did prepare slides, we wanted to emotionally connect with you. So we're going to kind of go through them. Then we're going to come back, show you the slides. I'm going to post the slides in, a, um, in the Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind group. So you'll get all this. But I, I still, like, take notes. Like, if you take notes and then you see them in a slide and then you kind of review this content, it will become yours. So, Todd, rock it out. What's number one? So I, I think number one, and it probably won't be a surprise, although the timing might be a surprise, and that is between now and the end of September, I wanna encourage everybody to define, to really define your personal growth plan going into 2019. I'm saying this for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, I was at an event recently and there was about 5,000 people at this event. It was in the uh, direct selling business and, um, one of the speakers asked this audience of 5,000 people, how many of you have a written personal growth plan that you follow, you could produce it right now, that it's something you look at each and every day? And in that room of 5,000 people, there may have been 500 people that put their hand up. And I think the thing that's interesting about this idea, Dave, is that especially in times like we're in right now where the industry is compressing, where pricing is, is more difficult than ever, where we've got moving inventory issues, both sides, we've got all the changes going on. Um, you cannot survive in this business if you do not have a really specific personal growth plan. And, um, and so it was surprising to me that so many people that want to be successful in businesses that are not easily successful oriented in terms of speed to success. Everything is hard. Everything requires an effort and requires work. And so part of this is to, to look at, do you have that intentional growth plan? And then, and then the, the, the big question has to do with when's a good time to start the personal growth plan for 2019? And the answer is not in December. Because anything that we try to do in December doesn't have the impact in January. And so we end up kind of kind of, well, I don't know, sacrificing maybe the first one or two or three months of any given year because we wait till the end of the year previously to really develop the plan. So what, what, what we do is, is we, we ask people to take a look at, you know, two things. One, 
Um, what are your intentional daily rituals? What are the things that you are going to commit to that represent the daily disciplines of you becoming the best version of you moving into 2019? And we, and we ask people then to, to think, what is your theme for the year? And so when you think about 2019, you think about the business, you think about how do I define what I'm really about and what I'm really, really focused on? And the, the narrower you can get that theme, the better off you are. And so, for example, my, my theme for 2019 is intentional impact. And by that, I mean, we're, we're in the impact business. We've always been in the impact business, but I'm going to become right now, I'm already moving there. I'm spending time thinking about, I'm going to be very, very intentional about not only where I impact, how I impact, and what indelible impact that I make. And part of that is going to be that there's things that I'm not going to do. And part of that is going to be there are, there are new things I want to do. But then part of it is <clears throat> there's things I already do that I need to do more of. And so I'm going to be very intentional about that. And so one of the tools I sent over, Dave, to you earlier that, that I think you uh, are going to forward out and put in the, in the Facebook group is the Life Mastery Top 20 Assessment. It's a 20-question it's a document. It's a very simple document for you to spend maybe an hour on and give yourself a specific score as it relates to the first nine months of this year. How are you doing in these critical areas? A five is you're doing great. You're you're achieving you know probably optimal uh, potential. You're not at your top potential, but given where you're at, you're doing you're doing okay. And there's going to be other areas that you're going to be a four or three or a two on. I've got guys that are in our elite group that when they go through this every year, um, they're at a two or three in some areas. And so the idea about starting the growth plan now, you get October, November, and December to actually lay the groundwork for that and. That way, when you hit 2019, you're already executing. You're already executing the plan for the year. And if you do that, you're going to be miles, miles ahead of your competition. So that's kind of the first one. Define your personal growth plan. So, so guys, I showed it on the screen while Todd was talking about it, that 20, top 20 assessment tool. That will be a document in the Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind Group. Uh, if, if you're watching this video and it's like six months later, you can still go into the document section and find it. So, you know, it'll be a post at the top right now, and then it will be in documents. Forever. So check that out and, and then schedule that time, you know, make sure you, you, we call them a jam session. You know, we learned that from Darren Hardy and his insane productivity program, but, you know, schedule a jam session where you're going to go through Todd Duncan's, you know, um, life mastery top. 20 assessment tool schedule schedule an hour and go through that so i mean god we're like what 15 minutes into this and and we could just stop right now and if you guys actually executed on that you're going to have more passion you're going to have more fun and, and and i hope this really speaks like if you're brand new to the business you know and you're in your 20s get after it um i literally got a call last week from a top producer who does 70 million a year in business kills it in the marketplace and he's he's having a pretty good year you know he's he's not you know up a lot but he's you know he's holding steady and he's like you know dave i'm calling you because i've never been more stressed out you know i'm i'm not sustainable you know like this isn't sustainable success so whether you're brand new whether you're killing it or whether you're struggling you know this is something and, and don't wait till the end of the year like do this now do this assessment now so Todd, I mean, I love, I love number one. I, I do think it's super important. In fact, you know, I'm, I'm going to schedule some time this weekend and go through that. So I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. Let me say something else. Um, guys, I want you to, to really know from the bottom of my heart that the most important thing that you will ever do is the work you do on you. And part of that is easy to understand that we want to be the best mortgage professional we can be. But at the end of the day, we need to become the best version of us we can be. We've got to be as good about us off the job as we are trying to and attempting to be on the job. And I think what ends up happening is we, we end up allowing a season to become the normal, right? And right now, we're going to be in a season. This, is a, this year might be a season in a career of 20 years. 
Uh, it could be that Q1 and 2 took you off the rails a little bit and you're trying to get back on track. Could be that maybe you've had unexpected turnover or maybe in your marketplace you've had challenges that you hadn't anticipated. And there's these seasons of focus that you really have to put your head down and, and get through. And as you get through it, you grow through it. And the reason that the assessment is so important is so that you can be intentional. And, and, and let's face it, in this business, there's no such thing as the easy road. There's no such thing as this is easy. It is hard. And, and the more you raise your own commitment to greatness, the harder it becomes. The, the, this is an uphill road. This is this this will never be down. You will never coast in this business your way to success. You will always have to claw it out and work it out. And that's why this intentional idea, just one word, intentional, that word is the most powerful word you could claim, I believe, as your theme for, for next year. Are you intentionally doing the things and produce the outcomes you're looking for. And so I would, I would take a day. I would take a day on the assessment. I would get a journal. I would get a couple bottles of water. I'd make sure that, you know, if you're doing everything electronically, do it electronically, you know, take some notes, but I'd sit down and, and look at these top 20 and just ask yourself, where could I make the corrections, the course corrections between now and the end of 2018? So when 19 rolls around, I'm already humming. That's the advice. I love that, Todd. And, you know, when you said that, it just reminds me, there is no easy path. You know, it's right. like the, the, the best loan officers, they make time to prospect, they get after it. There's a quote from Phil Knight that just always, I always say it in my head, because it just reminds me, it's all about being strong. And this quote is, there's no such thing as bad weather, just weak people. You know, and, and now again, you know, like it could be raining, it could be hailing, but you can get after it. And in the market right now with, you know, real estate companies buying new mortgage businesses, Zillow's in the business, Amazon's coming. I mean, the weather is not great out there for the referral based local loan officer, but you know what? It actually is because if you execute on advice, if you execute on clients for life, if you do the right thing, just like if the weather's bad, you put on the jacket, you're warm, you dress for it, get on a snowmobile, you know, have some fun in the snow. So, so anyways, Todd, I love that. Hey, let's, let's get on with number two. I think we crushed number one. What's number two? Yeah. So number two is a, uh, a very, I think, critical piece of advice. Um, as is our, as are the five things obviously, but the critical piece of advice here <clears throat> is I would really, really look at the, um, the nature and the nurture of my relationships. And so the second thing is to between now and the end of the year, do a year end business review with your top partners. And I would be very intentional about this. I would start today scheduling year end reviews to start next week, certainly not too far into October and however many true top partners you have. Maybe it's 10, maybe it's five, maybe it's 20, I don't know. I would have an intentional business review. I would allocate probably two hours to that business review. And I would, um, I would do a couple of things at the very least. Number one is I would find out from your partners where they're at. You know, for as much as our industry is changing, the real estate industry is changing. The, the, the way in which, you know, referrals are made and the way in which leads are, are developed and, and, and cultured and nurtured and the way in which, um, agents are, are, are getting later to the party than earlier to the party. The fact that north than 90% of the purchase volume next year is going to be from millennials tells us that there's not going to be as much control over the early on stages of referrals. And so I want to sit down now and I want to have conversations with <clears throat> what is the architecture and what is the choreography of our relationship going into 2019 look like? And where are the areas of your business that I can actually come alongside you and, and help you, you know, really achieve a battle plan on, on how to make that happen? And you're going to see a, a, there's a balancing act between the second one and the fourth one. But the, the second one is about making sure that you're doing what most 
lenders are not doing today, and that is developing a battle plan to help your referral partners stay relevant and to stay active and to stay in high demand. So by doing a gap analysis and figuring out, you know, three or four or five business areas that, that they need help in, and that to me is one of the most um, obvious things that you can bring to the party between now and the end of the year. And I think the other thing that's important is, is we know this from all successful businesses that have, you know, fun factors, that have growth factors, that have retention factors, attraction factors. We know that companies that really help their employees win are companies that have high growth. So loan officers that really help their agents win have high growth. And so I would have a what we call a dreams and goals conversation with them. I would spend 20 or 30 minutes trying to outline, you know, what are the the dreams that they have for the next year or two or three in the business? And what are some of the goals that have to kind of get revealed and, and need to become part of maybe a, a plan of attack that you and they together are able to um, connect on. And, and at the end of the day, one of the greatest forms of leadership influence. And, and man, any of you that are watching this broadcast or are part of the live broadcast that are branch managers or regional leaders or maybe even owners, and certainly you that are LOs, I'm gonna tell you right now, the, the greatest, the absolute greatest form of influence, period, bar none, is when you help a client win. So one of the questions that I would start asking and I would ask this on a regular basis. Um, I would make it probably my question for the year. Yeah, you heard me right. Next year, if you were to ask only one question, only one question in any relationship you have, the question would be, how can I help you win? That's the question. That's the only question you have to, to ask because the answers will reveal to you exactly what you have to do to seal the deal, to become valuable in the marketplace in a way that is unique and differentiated. So, you know, you don't have a lot of time to do this, but you must make the time between now and 2018, because if that meeting reveals two or three things that you need to do, and they take, you know, two to four weeks to put into play, you're not gonna get traction from any of the business review kind of opportunities until the end of the year anyway. So do a gap analysis, have a dreams and goals conversation, and make that question, how can I help you win your question for the year? Any sales encounter, any sales opportunity, any phone call, if you can talk about helping people win, people love winning. And that's why it's such a powerful question. So that'd be number two. I love that, Todd. And that Reminds me of the lead conversion playbook. I'm showing it on the screen right now. If you're watching this in the video, I'm going to put a link down below. So, you know, we've got these four key principles and strategy number five. Again, this playbook is all about how to optimize your conversion with a buyer is all about the hopes and dreams conversation. I mean, here's the deal. Average LOs talk about rates and fees in transaction. The best of the best talk about what are your hopes, dreams, and your goals. And now they show them a playbook called the Total Cost Analysis, how to achieve those by making a great mortgage decision. So everybody on this call that you've been through Todd Duncan's high trust training, you're just going, oh, you know, this is the foundation to high trust selling. If you go through this training, you know that the Total Cost Analysis is a great component of that. But here's the deal. Do you do it with every client? You know, do you have that hopes and dreams and goals conversation with every referral partner? Do you have it with every borrower? Because that is where it's at. It's all about execution. And by the way, you know, I don't want to overly pitch sales mastery, but I'm, I'm gonna, because I, I believe in this. It's like this webinar is valuable. Like if you're watching it, it's valuable. But let's face it, you could be multitasking. You could be, you know, you could have this on one screen. Heck, you may be listening to this, while you're driving and it's like a podcast, you know, and you're getting some value, but there is no value like being at Sales Mastery at this live event where Todd has, you know, from every song that plays to the stage, 
to who's there. There's just no substitute to the emotional connection. And I, I always just say like, it's one of these places where it's a life changing experience. There's no, subst no substitute for just being in a venue that creates a life changing experience to get you to execute. Because I can assure you, everybody that's listening to this, maybe some of you that are three months in the business, you're like, I didn't know this, hopes and dreams, goals. I should ask my customers that. This is jackpot, I just learned this. Okay, there's a few people that are just getting a takeaway from that. Most of you know this, you're just not doing it. So Todd, you know, I know you wanted to wait till the end to promote sales mastery, but, <laughs> but, but, but I just wanted to throw that out there because this is just one of those where we all know it, um, but we all don't do it enough. So um, Todd, you, if you want to add on to that, or if you want to go to number three, I'll let you decide. Well, I, you know, I, I think that I, I, what I'd love to say to your community and, and to the, the mortgage world that might be viewing this through your access points is the game is changing. And um, the theme for this year's event is called Game Changers. And, you know, one of the things that we want to encourage originators and leaders and owners to, to, to do is to be the change that you know the market needs. And the only way you can do that is not on an hour webinar. That helps, right? But the way that you can do that is you can spend four days connecting with people that have the same desired end result. And that is, how do I change my game? How do I change my game so that I'm relevant? How do I change my game so I'm attractive? How do I change my game so I'm efficient? How do I change my game so I have high conversion? How do I change my game so that I can deliver five stars on, on every consumer experience? How do I change my game in the B2C world? How do I change? There's, there's about 50 questions that we're going to answer at Sales Mastery. How do you change the game here, right? And so my goal this year is to have this event be the playbook for the next five to 10 years of your career. And Dave, I think you and I share a thought together, and I think I heard it from you initially, and, and that is what LOs do in the next 12 to 24 months will determine their next five to 10 years. I think that is a very true statement. And so one of the reasons why mastery is so critical is it's going to give you the entire playbook for the next five to 10 years, as best as we can pin it now, even in the face of technology moving quickly. Yeah, and then, and then remember, you're going to meet and connect with peers who yeah. sometimes they become accountability partners, mm -hmm. sometimes they just become great friends and taking nothing away from what happens on stage, the relationships, the dinner meetings, the pool meetings, you know, the in the lobby with your peers talking, there's just no substitute for that and the and the and the value that brings to you throughout the year. So yeah. just want to yep. remind folks of that. So Todd, I know we don't want to run out when we get to all four five. What's number what's number three? Number number three is to um what what I'm labeling this is kickstart your hourly rate. And that's not a new idea for any of you in the mortgage coach ecosystem. Certainly, if, if you've been involved in high trust, you know that one of the things that we're absolutely dogmatic about is what is your lifeblood ROI. And I bring this up because I've had seven phone calls with coaching clients in the last two weeks that have gone through an experience this year that has radically altered the trajectory of their life to the point where they're looking back on the first three quarters nearly completed for this year. <clears throat> and what we're watching is we're watching hourly rates that are approaching, if not a thousand dollars right there, $800, $900 an hour. And what, what I'm, what I'm asking people to really get serious about and, and, and before I even tell you that, I will tell you, I am getting serious about it is to, to really begin to look, again, one of the themes, Dave, of this call is the word intentional. And the idea behind intentionalness around my time, I think is right now screaming, screaming for the attention. You mentioned earlier that, that even top producers are saying they're working harder than they've ever worked. What ends up happening when you move from working smart to working hard is you lose your edge around your results. 
it becomes a little bit of a blurred line because all you're trying to do is get to a finish line. So you lose your perspective in the hunt, if you will, or in the midst, you lose your perspective around what am I really doing? And we, we end up kind of lowering the guardrails and, and, and kind of the blurred lines of what used to be my box, right? Here's what I do. I do borrower consultations. I add value to my partners and, I'm, and I oversee my team and operational excellence. Those are the three things that I know I need to, to do and I need to spend most of my time doing those. The problem right now is I'm working harder than I've ever worked and those lines have gotten blurred. So I need you between now and the end of the year. This is not, this is not a, a one hour talk on you know, what you need to do the rest of your life. I'm telling you right now, if you want 2019 to be a great year, the time to assess what you are doing with your time is actually right now. And so one of the things I want people to do is I want you to develop absolute intention around what you do. And then I think, Dave, the, the beautiful thing about what you and I do together <clears throat> and, and why sales mastery as a theme is so powerful is you guys need to get this. You need to understand that labor and ROI are, are impacted by the level of mastery of any of the skills that you have to deploy to go in to actually earning money. So two things start to happen and why sales mastery was invented as an event and why, you know, high trust sales Academy and all that is, is out there in the, in the learning ecosystem is because the better you get at any one discipline, the higher the ROI on that discipline. And so I would begin to look at, where do I need to be more intentional about what I'm doing with my time? So I said to Deb a couple of days ago, my wife, I said, we're not going to do anything in 2019 that does not maximize the dollarization of every minute we spend because we want to follow our own advice. And we're going to ask you guys to do the same thing. So for the last two and a half weeks, I have tracked everything that I've been involved in, in terms of what really is producing impact, because remember, I'm going to be about intentional impact. What am I doing that's producing real impact? And what am I, <clears throat> what am I doing that is not? And as a company, what do we need to say yes to? And as a company, what do we need to say no to? As an LO, what do you need to say yes to? As an LO, what do you need to say no to? So what I would do is I would, for you, reinvent and come up with a brand new 2019 not-to-do list. I started talking about this 20, 22, 23 years ago, and I think that people know it intuitively. They know it maybe even instinctively. But when, what ends up happening, happening is when markets get tough, we lose the lines. We lose the clarity. You have to make sure that you understand what to do between the lines. This is failure. This is success. You're never going to be at both edges of that permanently. You've got to fight to move away from time not well spent to time well spent. And the way to do that is begin to operationalize your personal efficiency. And I would pick right now, I would pick my income goal per hour for 2019, I'd pick it today. I'd pick it and I would say here in 2019, based on my financial plan and what I want to achieve, this is my minimum acceptable calculated hourly rate. And what I would do for the entire year <clears throat> is every time you get paid, I would move to watch that number go up. And I'm going to tell you right now, not because the money is important to go get, the money is a byproduct of what you have actually given, right? But I would say that the higher you get that number, knocking on the door of that $1,000 an hour, the more likened that that is going to be to being a top local mortgage advisor. You must, you must, you must understand that the time to be a generalist in this business is over. You will get crushed, absolutely crushed if you're a generalist. You must become a specialist. You must become the owner of advice. You must become 
you must become one of the world's best in your local market. And if you're in your local market as one of the world's best, you can fund two or 300 loans next year, no matter what the market is doing, if you're really, really good. And one thing that specialists do is they earn more money per hour than generalists. So you gotta go there. So the thing I love about that, and, and again, something I need to work on is being more intentional. I love to hear, Todd, that you're tracking your time. I, I Again, I've been interviewing a lot of top producers lately because even they are struggling. And it, it ceases to amaze me how high their standards are. And even though I'm talking to top producers that are like flat for the year in a market where everybody is down, they're flat, they're unhappy about it. And they're tracking their time. So if you're like new to this business, there's never been a better time. If you're struggling in this business. There's never been a better time to get serious about actually executing on that. And again, I, I'll say it. I kicked off the year. If you're a referral-based local loan officer, your past customers are your number one priority. And, and, and yes, you need to learn how to use your technology more effectively and better. And you need to amplify your humanity, you know, which, by the way, that means getting uncomfortable with video, you know. I mean, yeah. you, you need to own video as a referral-based local loan officer because that's a way for you to scale your personal brand. So if you're listening to this and you want to optimize, you know, your earning potential and you're not using video, it's kind of, you know, to me, like, you're not optimizing your success if you're not doing that. And, and again, I, I've been talking a lot about that. Um, obviously, I've been an evangelist for video. I'm not even gonna brag about when I called that out. Um, but there's no doubt, myself, mortgage coach, our crew, we're pioneers in that, but who cares? But right now, it's here. And if, if you are not leveraging it, you simply are not optimizing your, you know, as Todd puts it, how you're, you know, how you're calculating your hourly rate, you're leaving a lot of money on the table if you are not mastering that. And again, if you were using the total cost analysis, every family should get that video if you wanna optimize your hourly rate. Todd, any last thoughts on this one before we get to number four? Yeah, there's 75 million um, millennials that demand this and they demand video first, they demand connection, they demand speed of execution. You guys have to, have to, have to get comfortable with video first conceptual marketing and even communication. I would say the days of automated email updates um, are even less effective than ever compared to a video update or even a call from the lender. So there's, there's kind of a reversal of trends going here. You can't over automate, even though we see high speed technology coming at us in some of the communications, you've got to stay connected to the, and Dave, that, that idea of amplify the humanity, that's what technology should do. That's what, that's what at least we're counting on it doing. It should amplify the humanity in your relationships. Yeah. And just one more footnote yeah. this is principle number three in the lead conversion playbook where it's the you know, lender and loan officer today with the most digital friends wins. And a digital friend is someone that's downloaded your app. A digital friend is someone that you're communicating with them in the channels that they want. And, and by the way, a digital friend is someone that you have connected with. It consumes your video updates. You know, so Todd, number four. Yeah, so, so this is a great tee up, Dave, um, that number four is um, refine. And, and if you don't have one, then start your B2C strategy. Um, and, and B2C is business to consumer. You are a business owner as an LO. And to Dave's point just five minutes ago, I will bet the farm on the shift that a retail LO must make must make, it's not even an, an option anymore. You must make the shift to penetrating your ecosystem of borrowers. And so one of the things that, that we're floating at Sales Mastery is to really take a look at what we're calling your point of sale IQ. IQ is intelligence, right? And in our world, IQ is going to be the impact quotient. 
It's not going to be the intelligence quotient. It is going to be the impact quotient because the impact creates the influence. And so when I'm asking you to take a look at your point of sale IQ, what I'm asking you to take a look at is what is the, the impact quotient that you are actually generating right here in this conversation, in this combo. And what we know right now is we know that the baby boomers are, are changing in two ways that are going to affect business trends. They are obviously going to outlive their cash. And so they're, they're doing cash out refis and they are obviously going to need potentially reverse mortgages because they are going to outlive their money. So we got that issue going on. Those people do not have the same influence into the marketplace just based on their age group. However, there's a population of them that are the fastest rising startup group of new businesses for the reasons I already mentioned. So what I want to do is I want to pay attention to anybody that's in their 50s to, to mid 60s that is starting businesses that are going to have employees that are going to become future CEOs. I want to look at that group. The most important group is to look at the uh, to look at the millennial group because the millennial group has a digital footprint that is bigger than any other buying group in the world. So what I need to do is I need to look at that impact quotient. I need to look at the connection that I have with a millennial at point of sale. And then I need to unleash, unleash my social media integration strategy with that segment. Those 75 million people are going to be the biggest points of influence you will ever have in getting to more and more people. Now, forget for a moment the layering in your database, right? So there's a layering. Arguably, we could say that out of a thousand people, there's a hundred in that group, the top 10% that could be movers and shakers and, and be the, the guys and gals that introduce you to ecosystems and digital camps and, 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 and fields of, of, of personnel in their companies. The, that's the group that you need to focus on. There's 900 that could be a friend that could give you a referral. Okay, they're not gonna be the most active. So what I wanna do is I wanna figure out how can I get the 100 to give me a thousand instead of figure out how to get the thousand to give me a hundred. That's the, that is what's going to happen in the B2C world going forward. So why you have to be awesome, awesome at integrating TCAs into your borrower dialogue, why you have to be awesome at the hopes and dreams conversation with a borrower, why you have to be awesome at advice-based lending and why you have to be a specialist in home loan strategy is because that experience opens the floodgates to the marketplace you're never in a million years going to be able to get to with traditional marketing. That's why this one is so important. We have a special broadcast, Dave, that we're uh, giving to mortgage coach users you can talk about a little bit, but it's a one-hour broadcast that is going to go very, very deep on this one idea. Love, love that, guys. So I am showing that on my screen right now. The domain is salesmasteryevent.com forward slash mortgage coach. So yep. you see that on my screen. And, and when you go to that link, make sure you make note of the password is sales mastery 2018. It's right here. So you'll see that link, put that in as your password. Tremendous, tremendous value, but, but just can't emphasize enough. I heard, hope everybody heard what Todd just said. You need to refine your B2C strategy. That means annual reviews. Mortgage coach total cost analysis is not only an important lead conversion tool, but it is a referral magnet, you know, it's like you put it out there and, you know, everybody who touches a transaction gets it, advisors get it. So it generates more business. So Kim just asked the, the password. Remember the password, it's in the link. So if you go to that link, which by the way, I'm going to put this link at the top of our mastermind group. I'm going to pin it to the top as an announcement. So it'll be there um, for at least this week. And, and so check it out. Uh, by the way, I'm showing my group, showing the group right now. Like if you look at this group at the very, very top, 
when Todd talked about it, I posted the, um, the assessment. So at the top of the group, you want to download that assessment, it'll be there. So go check that out, click on the link. And then Todd, could you just describe this a little bit more to make sure everybody knows exactly they get to this yeah. link. I know it comes with a discount to go to sales mastery, cover that. It, and then it's, let them Yeah, it's, it's way, it's way more than that. I, I decided that I wanted to do a broadcast um, called disrupt or die, how to win with value. And so I built this broadcast and we had 2000 people go through it in five days. We had to rebroadcast it two times because we didn't have enough seats for the interest level. And so I decided because of my friendship with Dave that I would bring that broadcast back only to the mortgage coach community. So it's a one hour broadcast. I talk about three things, how to win with value, how to increase your referrals by eight X, and then how to drive five stars on every single transaction that you're involved in. The B2C strategy on how to increase your referrals by eight four is specifically in the middle of the broadcast. So there's three 18 minute teaching sessions. There's two two minute kind of how I'm gonna tie this into sales mastery but we're only giving this to the mortgage coach community outside of the first 2000 people that came through it when we actually hosted it two weeks ago. So it's uh, it's, and it's free. There's no strings attached. Uh, Dave, it's just a way to add value, you know, back to, to your community. And uh, because of our friendship, I want to make sure they had access to that. Love it. Love it, Todd. So check it out. The link will be at the top of our Facebook group. Uh, hope you'll be there. So Todd, we've gone through number one, two, three. Remember folks, this is recorded. So it'll be in our YouTube channel literally within hours. Uh, highly recommend that you share this with your mortgage friends. If you're on today's call and you're a branch manager, this is a great, you know, just schedule a sales meeting and go through this, you know, and, and pause it, like go through number one, pause. Okay guys, where are we at? You know, who's done this, who hasn't done it? Okay. Number two, who's done this? Uh, and by the way, I know just about every manager I know, you want your loan officers to go to sales mastery. Absolutely. You know, this, that's like something that you want them to use the mortgage coach total cost analysis. Have a meeting, talk about it. Use this to inspire them to take action. Go to sales mastery, use mortgage coach. What's number five, my man? Well, number, number five is, is do come to mastery, but it's deeper than that. Um, number five is own the art of creating value for others. And I'm really, really big on this as I, as I look at, you know, what we do as a company and as I encourage you guys to be the best version of you that you can be, I, I really believe that in the changing dynamic that we're seeing in this business, that the, the victory is going to go to the mortgage provider who offers the most value in comparison to anything else that's out there. I also believe that the loyalty of NELO to a branch manager is going to be based on the value that the manager brings to that relationship. At Mastery this year, we're going to be talking about leadership live and what does it look like to be in a live leader? What's it really, really look like to be able to um, create impact and influence for your LOs in such a way that they win because of you? What does it look like to, you know, to have your, your average fundings per LO on your team north of 200? What are the strategies that actually go into helping a, a leader win. And, and if you're an LO and you're thinking, well, I'm not a branch manager, you're still a leader. You're leading borrowers. You're leading referral partners. You are a leader. You have a database of a couple of hundred or maybe a couple of thousand borrowers that you've helped finance real estate. If you're a leader and you adopt that mindset, you're going to see that group as your sales team. You're going to actually move from being an LO that's got a couple hundred past clients to be in an active LO leader that's got 200 salespeople on his or her team. But the, the one thing absolutely that I know for sure, for sure, he who adds the most 
value wins. That's it. And so number five is you cannot go into 2019 without being committed to unleashing your value proposition and doing it in a way that creates an indelible impact on the human being that you're interacting with. And I promise you, I promise you beyond any promise I could ever, ever make, if you add the most value, you don't have competition. And that's number five. So guys, check it out. It also happens to be the key to not getting rate chopped more. And when you do get rate chopped, you win. It's also the equation for how you get the most referrals. And, and so I just ask everybody, really be honest with yourself. Sit down, schedule some time, like two homework assignments today. One, go through Todd's life assessment tool, schedule an hour, get it done, and then schedule an hour and do a true value assessment. And, and as you're doing that, you're going through your sales experience, you know, put your mind in, yourself in the mind of a borrower and go, you know what, how unique and valuable is this really? Like, you know, when you make your promise that, hey, I close on loans on time, I have competitive rates, you know, blah, 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 blah. When you do all that, go, how unique is that really? And, and then like when you listen to someone and then you deliver something to them, like a total cost analysis, or by the way, you don't deliver something to someone, how valuable is that? You know, and be honest with yourself and then do the same thing with your borrower. Do that value assessment. And by the way, if you are not an eight, nine, or a 10, you've got to go to sales mastery. And by the way, if you are an eight, nine, or 10, you need to go there too, because we need your leadership. And you know what? The best get better. And by the way, the funny thing is, usually the people that are there are all the best. You know, they, they, they are the ones that scored the highest on the value equation are the people that actually show up. Um, it's funny, one last thought. I had this loan officer call me, well actually he's a regional manager, and he called me because he said, Dave, I'm writing this book on the things that are, um, I think it's like the nine mindsets of the top producer. And I want to put mortgage coach in the book. You know, do I have your permission? And I'm like, this is this a trick question? Yeah, you can put mortgage coach in the book. And then I, I said, well, hey, I'm just curious, what are the nine mindsets? And, and, and there was a mindset that he had, and I, I, I can't remember exactly how he said it, but the mindset was the best of the best. They're, they love to mastermind. Like they love to talk about the mortgage business. They have, they have this passion for the business that goes, on, goes beyond business. It's like fun. It's like, hey, I only have so much for a vacation. And, you know, and I want to, and by the way, if you only have so much for a vacation, what better way than going to San Diego and doing your vacation where you can network with the best of the best. But it, it hit me that like the best of the best love talking shop, love brainstorming on how to get better. You know, they, you know, in this particular case, this leader lived in, I think Alabama has a lake house and he was telling me how, you know, I've got a lot of peers that also go to the lake and we get together and we have barbecues and our wives get mad at us because all we want to do is talk about the mortgage business. Well, that's the mindset of a top producer. You know, and so if you're on the fence, hopefully we'll see you. And if you are there, I'm going to actually record a video, um, share some ideas for the mortgage coach community on how we can connect as kind of a, a community within a community. So stay tuned for a little rant and conversation that I'm going to drive in our uh, community over the next couple of days. Todd, we are at the top of the hour. You get the last minute. Any final words? Yeah, guys, I, I appreciate you learning, growing, and getting better. Dave, I appreciate the, uh, you know, just the impact you're making as a company. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, Mastery has only been in business for 26 years because it delivers. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys there in three and a half weeks in San Diego. And uh, take a look at the broadcast that we're putting out through Dave today. And uh, you're going to be marketably different because of that broadcast. And, uh uh, I'm just grateful that we got to spend an hour together, Dave. So hats off to you. And uh, thanks, guys, for investing your time. I appreciate it. All right, guys. If you got value, any takeaways, I hope you like this. You know, it's in YouTube. Give it a like. If you're watching on Facebook, give it a like and share it with your mortgage friends. Todd, we got all kinds of positive value. I see the, the, the nice feedback coming in. So this call is a wrap. 
See you on Friday. See you next Tuesday. And Todd, I'm looking forward to seeing you in person soon. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye. Take care, everybody.